This lesson is solve quadratic equations by graphing, and in the other video we only had time to review the different possibilities for the numbers of solutions you might come up with as you're graphing quadratic equations. So what I wanted to do is go through at least one of the examples in the lesson. Um, the one I think is liable to be least familiar to many of you is uh, example B, where you're supposed to use a graphing calculator and solve the or analyze the graph of y equals x squared minus 20x plus 35. So what we're going to do is go use the uh, Desmos graphing calculator at www.desmos.com. And we're going to just take this function and input it into that calculator. And then we'll play with it a little bit and see what sort of, uh, sort of information we come up with. So let's open up that other window. Right here, and this is just the blank initial window you get when you sign in. We're going to input that function that we're given y equals x squared minus 20x plus 35. Now we know this is a squared function, this is a quadratic function based on the fact that the x term is squared, but all we're seeing here is a line. So that tells us we're probably too close. We're probably zoomed in too far. We need some bigger numbers. So I'm going to zoom out a little ways here. Actually, if we zoom out quite a ways, we can see, I have to zoom way out to see the whole parabola. We can see that the vertex is going to be down pretty far, down here somewhere below 50, somewhere below 60 even, it looks like. But let's start off by finding those x-intercepts. So they're going to be somewhere here between 0 and 20. Um, now we know that when you're looking for the x-intercepts, that whatever their values are, the y value of them will be zero because there's no up or down when you're actually on the x-axis. So what we can do is solve our function, um, the x squared minus 20x plus 35, for y equals zero. We can do that by duplicating the function with this little duplicate button here, and then we'll just replace y with zero right here so that we've solved this same function for 0 instead of for y. And you can see it tells us right here x equals negative 9, or x equals 1.9377. So basically x equals 2, or x equals 18.06. So, and these two vertical lines here that you see, let's see if we can change that color. I'll just flash them a little bit there for you. Those two vertical lines represent those two values. So our two x-intercepts are approximately 2 and 18. Now that tells us that the vertex is midway between 2 and 18. So if that's the case, let's see if we can draw right here, then we should have our vertex on this line right here at 10, because between 2 and 18 is 16 points, so it's 8 one way and 8 the other way. So now we can just take 10, now we know the x coordinate of our vertex, we could put that 10 in where x is over here, and in order to do that, we need to duplicate our function again so we don't end up changing this value. So let's, let's duplicate our function once more. We'll choose this one here, duplicate, set this back to y, and then substitute 10 in for x, because now what we want to find out is what happens to y when x is 10. So we're going to substitute 10 in here and in here, wherever we had x before. And now you can see that it tells us y equals negative 65 right here. Oops, wrong button, sorry. y equals negative 65 right here. So we, in order to see that, of course, we're going to have to zoom back out. So let's zoom out a little ways. Let me erase that silly drawing that doesn't fit anymore. I don't know how. There's another button for it. I don't know where it is. So if we zoom way out, though, we can see that this new line it's drawn down here at negative 65 tells us where that vertex is, that point on our, our actual graph. So that's our three locations, vertex negative 65, x-intercept approximately 2, and approximately 18.